Hey Grafana, starting this week we're gonna take a break of the usual videos as we're looking back at a year of Vanguard and we're gonna celebrate everything that happened this year from all the awesome cards that were introduced, the amazing stuff that happened and all the generic stuff around it that basically summarized the entirety of 2019 in the Vanguard side of the spectrum. And starting today we're gonna take a look at the awesome great ones that were revealed this year that helped many decks to define their new strategies or empower their respective clan to new heights and allows them to shine in the current meta. So without further ado, let's kick off this video. Stand up! Bangano! Great ones are primarily the backbone of every strategy. Either great ones are just essential consistency cards that allows you to fetch certain cards, cycle through your deck, or enable you stuff, or are basically the main engine that combined with certain great twos and great threes allows your deck to function in a new type of strategy or mechanic that embodies this new playstyle. And this year alone, we saw a bunch of new great ones released in every single set that allows specific clans to flourish in new types of playstyle from insanely support cards to consistency engines as well as just strong aggressive tool cards. And in this video we're going to showcase the best of the best and this isn't your typical top 10 list where we're going to rate cards from worst to best. This is just a a collection of very powerful grid ones in no specific order and ironically there are 10 cards in this video but that's just happened to be the case as when we go over the other grades that won't be the same situation so without further ado i present to you guys the best new grade ones of 2019. We kick this list off with the main support great one for the brand new blaster deck for Royal Paladin. The new blaster deck benefits in all kinds of way when having blaster blade on the field. From big power boost to multi drive checking units. The only downside to this new playstyle is that it's really dependent on having blaster blade on the field. And because we have Genslot as our main vanguard, we can benefit from our blaster blade searches in our Alfred cards. This is where Knight of the Harp Tristan comes into play. Its ability to fetch a blaster blade contributes to the consistency of this specific deck. Also the fact it adds the card to hand helps as you can set up future plays without having to call the blaster blade so it's vulnerable. Also this circumvents certain card abilities that prohibit superior calling like Guilty Empress Dark Face Gradora. Its usefulness will only increase the more blaster support we're going to get. And let's be honest, it's Royal Paladin. It's not a matter of if, but when. The next card is the exact opposite and yet oddly similar to Tristan. As for the next card, we have Transient Revenger Masquerade. Just like Tristan, this card increases the consistency of the deck, but for Masquerade, he does it in a complete different way. The new Blaster Dark slash Mordred Phantom build uses Blaster Dark to create extra force markers every time you call a Blaster Dark to the field. And late game, you can resend all your Blaster Darks, making it a very strong aggressive tool. So so to make this deck work, you need a Blaster Dark on the field at all times. And yes, Shadows has a lot of filtering with Namain, Nullity Revenger Masquerade and even the Blaster Darks Twin Drive, but once you lose your Blaster Darks, the deck won't do anything anymore. Royals can fix this with Monarch Sanctuary Alfred, and thanks to Transit Revenger, Shadows can now too. However, that is just the tip of the iceberg for this card, as yes, it can help you with some consistency and longevity, but there are so much more application this card can create. First off, you can use this card to spam force markers, as for every Counterblast and Transient Revenger, you can recall a Blaster Dark. The second thing is, you can use this card as a general tempo card. You can call this in the early game, as it can enable 7Ks to hit 18K, or 10 to 9K hit over 20K. Okay, so you're forcing guard from your opponent's hand no matter what. And mid to late game, you can use its ability to recall a retired or soul blasted blasted dark to maintain the tempo as it gains a plus 5k, making it a potential 23k column with an 8k booster. And the fact it goes to soul helps any Shadow Paladin deck, as a lot of powerful skills uses soul in some kind of way. So this makes it even useful in other decks than just a deck it was primarily designed for. Another very versatile card that gets its value from tempo is Offensive Punter. This new Spike Brothers Grade 1 does everything the clan could wish for. It gives you free pluses, fills the field, cycles, goes back to the deck and to top it all off it can help your early game aggression. 
its ability to be able to boost as a 10k unit is insanely useful for an early aggro deck. He can make any unit hit over defensive trigger, making it possible to make all free attacks to force guard if they don't want to ramp up all the damage early on. This in combination with all the other great cards of Spike Brothers, and you can see how deadly these combinations are, as you can combine it with cards like Spike Bouncer, Gyro Slinger, and Powerback Ronaldo to build strong fields out of nowhere. And with cards like High Street Bracky and Juggernaut Maximum, you can dish out powerful attacks. And this card allows this strategy to function on a bit more consistently basis. And when we finish it off with the new Great Freeze, you can look at a potential turn free victory. Nova Grappler for the longest time was in a really awkward position since the reboot, but that all changed when they got their Beast Deity support. And this great one, Beast Deity Scarlet Bird, is one of the main reasons why that engine is so powerful as it is. The ability to attack outside of the attack phase and have a potential free attack is a very powerful ability, as you can have a better control of your resources and cards as you can stop committing once they get a defensive trigger. This wouldn't be possible if it's all during the battle phase as you already committed your cards on the board. The only downsides this deck had was Brutal Jack, their most powerful beater, not being able to stand and their units staying rested if they already dealt the damage. This problem was completely removed with the release of Scarlet Bird. Not only does this card restand all of your units, it can potentially get to a draw, making this card insane for Nova Grappler. As not only does it work for the Beast Deities, it can work for any deck as long as it runs some cards that stay rested during the main phase, like Brutal Jack for example. This card is also the counter against certain powerful cards. It soul-handedly defeats Mega Connolly as it nullifies most of their abilities, and not only that, it negates Guilty Empress Darkface Ghidorahs and Zambaku Stand Lock Scale. Scarlet Bird's ability allows him to recent all units, that includes your Vanguard as well. So this card was another nail to the coven of Sambaku, as yet another powerful deck has an out against their main pressure tool. For the halfway point, we're going to look at arguably the most used card on the list, as it finds its way in almost every competitive Shadow Pattern and list. It doesn't matter if it's standard or premium, it's Blackwing Swordbreaker. Swordbreaker fixes some inherent issues Nemain possesses because an extra copy of Nemain in hand is a dead card, but Swordbreaker gets some extra benefit from being called from hand, making it still a useful card during that turn. But her main power lies in the draw effect. The main's main strength lies in the fact that you can filter your deck as soon as turn 1. Getting another target for Nemain makes her even better. However, having a target that could potentially plus you even more during the turn is insane, as it really turned you to your win condition. Filtering units is great, but you still need to wait for another draw effect to get the beneficial effects of filtering. This in some cases comes as late as the drive checks, making it really slow if you're hoping for key pieces. The fact that you can combine the filter with a draw effect in one combo is a very powerful tool as you can get instant profit. The added bonus is that she's another great one that can potentially be a 10k booster. This has somewhat the same power as offensive punter but to a less extreme effect as the clan isn't built around early tempo. But also for premium this is a great card for the ritual engine as it helps Luards do even more pluses and potentially ritual numbers. If we looked at all the great ones ever release this spot would go to the main herself but for this year Swordbreaker is almost as good when combined with the main. Next up we have another card that finds its way in almost every list but is not for the consistency reasons as Swordbreaker but because this card allows you to achieve your win condition and can enable all kinds of strategies as this card can be used in all kinds of different decks. Dark Regulars changed when Varian's Killer Till was released. This card allows you to keep filling your soul with cards from the drop zone or damage zone, which not only helps you to remove the strain on your deck, you also have more control over what cards you put into your soul. This combined with all kinds of powerful cards, think of Dentarian, Dark Soul Conductor and No Life King, and when we take a look at premium, we have all kinds of crazy cards like Dimension Creeper and Were Tiger Jaeger. And the potential added counter charge is just an added bonus on top of all the great benefits. Thanks to the control soul charging this card provides, Dark Regulars can achieve OTK turns on a very consistent basis in all types of executions. And okay, Master of Viv, Variance Hardleg, Hope 
open damp, gust steel, it's all possible and this card stands as a centerpiece to all that. When we take a look at the beginning of this year, we see a set which didn't produce a lot of memorable cards that are used till this day, but two cards stand out and one of them is Witch of Frog, Melissa. Melissa was a big step in a different direction for Genesis as this was a completely different thing from their other cards but for that it's such a strong card as it can be used as a tech card in any Genesis deck that can surprise any opponent. Being able to reset the board is a very strong effect as it can cancel your opponent's strategy as you give them potentially a group of useless cards and it is somewhat similar to Upheaval Pegasus. The only major difference we see is that cards are called on top of the units making it also a potential mill card that can destroy your opponent's deck. This is extremely effective against Axel decks and also when used as a surprise during the late game when they are running low on cards. The fact that this card can break boards, can be used in any decks and potentially win games without dealing 6 damage makes it a deadly card and one needs to watch out for when facing Genesis players. The second card from this time is Monoculus Tiger. This card was already quite exceptional from the point of release as it can give you games when you're a bit lucky especially in premium when combined with Zoa. However it didn't really matter what you got as your opponent doesn't knew that as well so they couldn't guard effectively and they had to make a 50-50 gamble in situations where they had limited guard options. But with the release of the new Great Nature support at the end of this year this card became all the more powerful forcing your opponent to only guard with normal triggers is pretty harsh as that means they can only guard with effectively 12 cards as most people run for draw pgs this combined with all the extra powerful attacks results in the fact that this card could give you games before they even began another guard restriction grade one that makes it to the list is desert gunner gaiben this grade one is such a strong unit that helps narukami way more than you might think first off the card is completely free so you can always benefit from its ability the plus 3k is also something that helped tremendously as it can easily fix numbers for your columns and then the guard restrict on top of it is so essential as it can block a lot of guard potential. Narukami doesn't really swing for multi attacks they go for less numbers but higher powered attacks. So combining that with a PG guard restrict is all the more useful. Now imagine having two of these cards in the back row that means you can make almost every attack with a PG guard restrict. And now combine that with a restanding Detonix Drill Dragon after the first Vanguard attack, every attack afterwards has a PG restriction, making it really impossible to guard effectively against all your empowered attacks. So your opponent is forced to waste a PG on a 12k Vanguard if they want to use those PGs. This makes Narukami an already annoying clan all the more annoying. For the last card on the list, we go back to Nova Grappler, as this brand new grade 1 makes an entire deck works as without it, it wouldn't even be on the table of discussion. As we're talking about the new God Hand Dragon deck. And a great one in question is of course a great Bengal. I mean, this card is. This unit allows for the entire deck to function as resolving only one crit bangle when combined with a whole plethora of support cards can give you games. So going minus one for that isn't really a big problem. The other crazy thing is that you can splash this card in any Nova Grappler deck that runs some front triggers. In the worst case scenario, you have a 10k shield in hand. The best case scenario, you might have a field with 7 plus attacks and each of them have a certain power bump of 10k. This card allows Nova players to experiment with one or more fronts in builds that usually only runs crits as they can forcefully achieve the front effects with the help of Bengal. And that only makes this card a very solid grade 1 that can have a profound impact on a meta game. And there you have it, all the best new grade 1s revealed in 2019. Keep in mind this list is primarily only about new cards revealed. If we were talking about the general best grade 1s, then we most certainly included some grade one from the previous eras as some cards are still used till this day that are pretty insane. But now I'm curious of what you guys think that are the best grade ones revealed in this year. So let me know in the comments down below all your top picks for the best grade ones and also explain why those specific cards are the best grade ones of this year. It doesn't have to be a top 10, it can be a top 5, it can just be the top 3, just 
the amount of cars that you think should be justified or at least be highlighted let me know in the comments down below because i'm curious of all your thoughts and opinions on all the many cars revealed in this year but with that said i want to wish everybody a merry christmas as today is christmas at least of the recording of this video and probably when it's out and otherwise i hope you guys have some awesome happy holidays as we're ending off 2019 with a banger but in that same breath, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters for making this video and everything on the channel possible, because you guys are amazing. But if you too want to support the channel and everything that's happening on the channel, then head over to patreon.com slash Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Timeleap, and I'll see you guys in the next one!